Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live on May 10th. It is a Wednesday. Lisa, Scott, Dylan here on a, well, it's kind, kind of, of a, a stormy, dreary, windy, rainy morning. Depending yeah. on where you are. Yeah. Because, you know, if you're up in the north, pretty much north. You're coast. like, it's sunny and beautiful. Yeah, what exactly. are they talking yeah, about? Yeah, north of like Hillsborough, what rain? Like Grand Forks, <laughs> you would tackle those blue skies all yeah. morning because they didn't see any. But yeah, Southern Valley, Bismarck. Pretty much stretching right along I-94, and those storms rolled across. So, yeah. so we saw those rumbles of thunder and hail. Hail. It was loud. A little bit, small hail. So it was loud. The rain. I could hear the, the thunder, and then Lydia was saying earlier she could hear the rain really pouring here in Fargo at our mm -hmm. WDAY mm -hmm. studios. Mm -hmm. Before we get into the forecast, though, too, we looked at a lot of pictures of a lot of hail. Yeah. Out like near, well, Bismarck Mandan had yep. some of it, yep. west of west of there too. Yep. Yep. It looked like snow-covered roads, like they <laughs> yeah. needed to get out a snowplow. Gave hey, people some flashbacks they didn't want to have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can you explain kind of what was going on? Yeah, so there's a lot of cold air in the atmosphere, and the storm just dumped all its hail in one spot. Or big hailstones. Of course, to get big hailstones, you have to have a much stronger storm, much stronger updraft, and mm. that storm just wasn't that strong. But it sat over the one spot for a long time, the hail part of the storm did, and that's why they got just a whole lot of hail yeah. just sat there. So thankfully, most of it was pea-sized. Yeah. Okay, I was going to ask that. Spots, so it was, a little it was bigger. small, yeah. just yeah. a lot of it? Okay, I heard a, one or two reports of ping pong, but most of the hail that fell was pea-sized, which okay. is good. Okay. It's just a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So Adds up, I guess. It does. <laughs> it really does. So Okay, yeah. so the rain is moving out. Well, that the hail, that was the same system. We just got rain yep. really here. Yep. But moving out now? Yep. Uh, maybe a few more isolated storms later on today. A couple of them could still have hail, a little bit of wind, uh, hail up to quarter size. So we go into the afternoon. Uh, that's possible for anywhere, but especially actually from a line kind of from Bismarck to like Devil's Lake to like Grand Forks, kind of a weird line there, and northward. So watch that. Um, isolated in nature, maybe a few more storms overnight. And then tomorrow and through the weekend, looking at more showers and thunder showers. So... His active pattern continues, unfortunately, and then like next week we dry out temperatures in the upper 60s to low 70s. So we did huh. cool off a little bit next week, not in the middle 70s anymore, but still, I think we'll take the upper 60s. We had a, one of our uh, directors yesterday after the 11 o'clock show, he came in here and he's like, we're already in the 70s and 80s, what happened to spring? <laughs> it's true, we, don't have, we didn't have any days in the 60s, but next week hopefully get a couple of nice days in okay. 70s, which is about perfect weather, sure. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, also, once we get like a little drier next week, then things will really green up. They're already starting to. Oh, yeah. No, oh, it's greening up big time. But yeah, yeah. yeah by next week, you get some sun. Yeah, it's going to be green, green, green. Hopefully, no rain, a lot of dry time. Get some farmers in the fields, too. Because yeah, I know, of course, there. this rain is just. Makes it tough. It does. It, it is making it very tough. So, all right. All right. Cool, all cool. right. Thank you for that update. Yep. All right, uh, we have a, a story that's breaking right now. We're working to get more details for you. Um, only a few things confirmed right now, but we do know there is an investigation underway right now just outside of DigiKey, which is in Thief River Falls. Uh, we're hearing some reports of some kind of um, situation that happened, whether it was last night into the early morning hours. Uh, serious. Uh, we did check the jail roster there, and just before 4 a.m., uh, there is someone in jail on a murder charge. So kind of telling you the details without telling you the details. We do know that it's yeah. it's likely a murder investigation. We're still working to get some of these details confirmed. WDAY has several calls in to law enforcement mm -hmm. in that area. But what we are hearing right now is there was some kind of incident at DigiKey and Thief River Falls, and at least one person has been booked into the jail that happened overnight on a murder charge. So stay with us. We're working to, to learn more details for you on that. All right, today, a wildlife refuge in northern Minnesota will move forward with prescribed burns. This is just about a week after a wildfire burned more than 1,500 acres of land there. That wildfire, of course, happened at the Agassiz National Wildlife Refuge, which is near Thief River Falls. <clears throat> they say they still plan on doing its prescribed burns this week. Of course, weather is permitting on all of this. Crews will start today and finish up on the 15th. That burn will include more than 11,000 acres of land. Uh, this is a big story that our partners at Inform.com broke today. New this morning, the city of West Fargo has not been charging some commercial customers correctly for using utilities. The report published this morning on Inform.com shows that while some were overcharged, others were undercharged. Anyway, the overall result, a major net loss for taxpayers of at least $1.25 million. The city says it believes this is only commercial accounts, not residential. The biggest undercharge it has discovered so far involved Cargill. 
Uh, Cargill was charged, undercharged, $1.4 million. That was dating back to 2017. Uh, Cargill has agreed to pay back a little more than $500,000 of it. Uh, if you want to read more about the other companies involved and what the city is still working to learn, you can check out that story on Inforum.com. This morning, Henning, Minnesota school superintendent is saying she is disappointed after voters turned down a $27 million school referendum. However, she is thankful that people made their voices heard at the polls. The improvement plan failed by a pretty wide margin on two different questions, the first of which would have approved nearly $23 million for things like new roofs, HVAC systems, renovating classrooms, and other various improvements. That was struck down with 739 people voting against it and 497 in favor. The second was a vote for a new gym. That was going to cost over $4 million. 765 people voted against that and then 470 voted for it. Uh, today, the City Council in Grand Forks, along with the community, will be gathering at the Alaris Center at 4 this afternoon for the State of the City Address. Of course, it's free, open to the public. You can also watch it online. Uh, it comes amid the fallout from the failed Fufung project, as well as other controversies in Grand Forks. We do know Mayor Bochensky plans to talk about ongoing development in the city today. Other topics will be the budget and increase in the value of construction permits. Uh, Bochensky says this, the speech will mainly focus on the positive as well as the future of Grand Forks. And of course, we will be covering that story for you. So you can get a full recap, find out what he you know, was talking about mm -hmm. and kind of the reaction as well on our evening news here on WDAY. New this morning, Moorhead Area Public Schools will continue their summer meals program for students. The program is part of the school's efforts to ensure that children have access to healthy meals during the summer months. It will be available for students that are 18 and under. They'll be able to get breakfast and lunch free of charge at several schools and park locations. Um, all meals are required to be eaten on site, and this is important. The school is asking that if your child has any dietary restrictions, make sure that you call their food and nutrition office so they can get that taken care of. That program starts on May 31st. Good news for kids in the Moorhead School District. Uh, they won't have to go to school as long as they first yeah. thought. Moorhead has changed when school will end. It will now be Friday, May 26th which is already graduation day for Moorhead High School. Last month, the district had scheduled a school day for Tuesday, May 30th, which is actually the Tuesday after Memorial Day, which mm -hmm. would have been a huge bummer for everyone <laughs> yeah. involved. Uh, it was actually, they added that to the schedule because they were trying to do a makeup for a snow day when they ran out of virtual learning days. However, at the board meeting this week, the school board decided to forgive that makeup day, so. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, today, classic rock group Foreigner will be performing at Shields Arena but they're not going to be taking the stage alone. They have some special guests. The Cheyenne High School Choir is actually going to join them on stage during their number one hit, I Want to Know What Love Is. Um, the band also donating $500 to the school's choir, choir program. Tickets are still available if you want to see the rock band plus the choir students. Um, the concert starts at 8 o'clock tonight. It should be fun. Yeah, I love everything about that story. It would be fun to go to. Mm -hmm. A big national story, the U.S. debt ceiling drama is about to start a new chapter. Talks have reportedly fallen flat between President Joe Biden and top congressional leaders. The White House wants the spending cap lifted, but House Republicans are pushing for their already passed limit save grow plan. So we're kind of tracking this to see what the next step is. Can they continue their talks? We're hearing um, something is maybe scheduled for Friday. Uh, and we've been reporting this on WDAY. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says if an agreement isn't reached, the U.S. could run out of money as soon as June 1st. All right, Hot Mike, 9 to 11 on WDAY Extra at Inform.com with Dom Izzo. Today, they're going to be talking boys volleyball. It's coming to Minnesota high school sports, but how soon will there actually be teams in our area? Also, the Summit League track championships begin tomorrow in Fargo. we got to find out if NDSU can keep that dynasty going. Dom is going to be talking about all of that today. You can watch it 9 to 11, WDAY Extra and Inform.com. I want to remind you, of course, you can watch this anytime later on your Facebook feed. We do it live, but of course it stays there all throughout the day. We also make this into a podcast. So if you want to listen that way, go to inform.com slash podcast and look for the Inform Minute. We do that every weekday morning. And you can also find this on our Inform YouTube channel every weekday morning as well. So check that out. And don't forget, right now is a great time to get your Inform.com subscription. 99 cents a month for your first three months. Yeah. Check that out. And then join us for an update on that breaking news story later this morning at 11 o'clock in our news. Catch you covered this afternoon as well with all the changing active weather and local news. 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. And then we'll be back tomorrow morning for first news from 5 to 7 in the morning.
Have a good day, folks.